What's up YouTube? Watch this video to find out all you need to know about the new dynamic meeting course on StepN. So let's jump right in. So some of you have been asking me to do a video about the new updates to the dynamic minting course on StepN and this is the video and you can find out the full details of this in the StepN white paper on the official website. But here I've just taken a snapshot of all the information from the white paper and I'll be analyzing the different changes that they have rolled out and perhaps even to give us an insight about what that means going into the future. And the first change that I have to highlight is actually about the GMT to GST cost ratio. And apparently this is a factor to be considered in the app right now. And depending on the GMT to GST cost ratio, different rules for shoe minting will be applied. So as you can see, for the first section, when the price of GMT is less Less than GST, these are the minting costs that will be applied. Further down, you can see that when the GMT cost is more than the cost of GST, they mentioned that they will be implementing additional rules to regulate the minting cost later on for different chains and for different scenarios. Next, they have broken up the shoe minting costs into two different factors. The first factor being token count and the second being token percentages. And what do I mean by that? Token count just means how many tokens are used in shoe minting. So in this example that they have given, when the price of GMT is less than GST, the token count used for shoe minting is actually 200. What changes with the change in GST price is actually the token percentages that are going into the shoe minting event. On the step and white paper, they have actually used the mint event between two common sneakers at min zero as the example. And for two common sneakers at min zero, the token cost is at 200 tokens. However, the token percentages changes with the change in GST price. As you can see, it ranges for 100% GST to 0% GMT, all the way down to 40% GST and 60% GMT. Do note that based on their update, they do not intend to make the percentages 20% GST and 80% GMT or more, which also means that they will not revert to a state where minting will only cost GMT. And if you might recall the recent double minting event that occurred the week before, they actually tried rolling out an update to allow shoe minting only using GMT and that actually crashed the GST prices and I believe that is something that they don't really want. And I do think that this new dynamic minting cost update is linked to their experiment during the previous double minting event where they changed the shoe minting cost several times during the event. Next, the team also mentioned that there will be a price differential across different chains and they'll be implementing different rules for shoe minting depending on the prices of GST and GMT on the different chains. Finally, the team also does tell us that they are keeping a close eye on the supply and demand for both GST and GMT and you can expect potential changes in the future again. So for this video, there will be a two-part analysis. The first part is in the red box and the second part is in the green box. And for the red box, we'll be looking at the rules provided by the step end developers regarding the amount of GMT and GST needed when the price of GMT is less than GST. And I'm taking the assumption that there is a equal sign for the inequality because if you check the website, the inequalities actually overlap with one another and with this overlap, I can't really do an analysis so I just made a simple assumption as shown on the screen in the red box. Do note that in my analysis, I am assuming that everything else remains the same. However, this may not always be the case as one action may be the cause of a second effect downstream. For this analysis, I've simplified the thought process to focus on one thing at one time, focusing on shoe minting costs so as to make it less complex. And finally, in my analysis, I'll be assuming that the price of GST is twice the price of GMT. And as to why I'm making this assumption, I've actually gone to CoinGecko to pull out all the historical data of GST and GMT. After making a simple division of GST over GMT, I've plotted the information as shown on the right. 
And you can see on the top graph, actually the price action between GST over GMT increased significantly at the very beginning because at the moment when GMT was first launched, its price was much lower. This caused the GST to GMT price ratio to skyrocket all the way to almost 30. However, that slowly came down within a matter of days. By the 18th of March, things started to settle down. And if you refer to the chart at the bottom right, you'll see that today, currently the price ratio between GST to GMT is hovering around 2. I'm not sure what will happen in the future. I'm not sure whether this ratio will be changing or whether the step end developers have something else in mind. But I do think that for now, based on this trend, assuming a price ratio of 2 to 1 for GST to GMT is quite reasonable, at least in the short term. And so based on the inequality rules that were updated by the step end development team on the step end white paper, I've actually plotted out a chart based on those information. And this is what you'll see. And so on the x-axis, actually, you'll see the GST price in USD. On the y-axis, you'll see the min cost in terms of the number of tokens, whether is it GST or GMT. And actually, there's a secondary axis on the right side showing the total cost of USD used in a single mint. You'll see that the blue bar represents the GST minting cost in GST. The orange bar is the GMT minting cost in GMT. The grey line is the overall cost for shoe minting. And on top of that, you'll see two dotted lines, one blue and one orange, representing the trend lines of the respective bars. And I think based on the chart, we can have multiple observations. And the first observation here is that the GST price only affects token percentage, not token count. As we sum up the total tokens required for shoe minting throughout the different prices of GST, it always sums up to 200. And so you know that the step end development team is not changing the token count, but just changing the token percentage. The second observation is that the min cost continues to increase with increasing GST prices. So even though we are reducing the amount of GST being used in the shoe minting, the relevant increase in the GMT cost actually offsets this GST cost. And you can see that as the GST price increases, it will cost more and more for anyone to mint a shoe. The third observation is broken up into several parts. And the first part is that you can see that there is a balance range where the GMT cost and GST cost is equal to one another, 50% to 50%. And this occurs between $4 to $8. There's a second range which has a faster change between $1 and $4, where you can see the dotted curve being relatively steeper than the change on the other side. And this other side is actually the slower change range. This ranges from $8 to $10 and onwards. And as you can see, the slope of the dotted curve is a lot less steep. If looking at the dotted curves is confusing for you, perhaps you can look at how the different bars are moving. If I may just bring your attention to the blue bar on the left, you can see that it actually requires 200 GST at a GST price of $1. And this actually drops by 40 when the price of GST is $2. And this continues to drop to 120 when the GST price is at $3. And so you can see for every increase in dollar, there is always a drop in 40 GST. However, if you look at the blue bars on the right side, from $7 to $8, there's actually a drop in only 20 GST. And from $8 to $9, there's no change in the GST amount. And the next change actually drops from $9 to $10, dropping by 40 GST. And as such, you can see that the comparison, when the GST price is low, it actually changes every dollar. And when the GST is higher, between 8 to 10, actually it changes every $2. This is how you observe the range for faster change and the range for slower change. And finally, as I previously mentioned, there is no range in the graph showing a token percentage of 20% GST to 80% GST or 0% GST to 100% GMT. And I'm not totally sure why that is. I do think that it could be related to the findings which the step end development team have gotten during the weekend which they actually tried out the shoe minting cost to be at 100% GMT and perhaps the outcome is something that they don't really want. 
And the fourth observation is that as the GST price increases, you see that less GST is required by the decreasing of the blue bar. At the same time, more GMT is required observed by the increasing of the orange bar. And do note that the decrease in GST is not equal to the increase in GMT. On the rightmost, you see that the maximum amount of GMT you need is actually 160. However, on the leftmost, you see that a maximum amount of GST that you need is actually 200. If you watch up to this point, do remember to like and subscribe and watch all the way to the end where I'll be sharing my insights which could potentially change the way you look at the market and change the position that you take on the Statman app. So watch right on. And so for observation 1, we see that the GST price only affects the token percentage and not the token count. And in my opinion, I do think that this could be a way that the step N developers is trying to push the price of GMT to be equal to GST because they don't want to actually change the amount of tokens required for shoe minting. But they just want more people to use GMT instead of GST. And the second observation is that the mean cost continues to increase and this actually means that the opportunity cost to mint new shoes continues to increase with increasing GST prices. And GST is the main token that you earn through the activities on the Step N app and it's actually the main means of cashing out your profits daily. And as the price of GST increase, it also means that more people will be tempted to cash out their profits by selling their GST. This will need to be balanced with the opportunity cost of using these GST to further enhance your shoe or further enhance your assets. Whether is it to increase the level of your shoe or in this case to mint new shoes. Next, the third observation is that there is a balance range between $4 to $8. There's a faster moving range from $1 to $4, the slower range from $8 to $10, and that the 20, 80, and 0, 100 token percentages are missing. And I do think that the step end developers think that there is a stable price ratio for GST to GMT and that in that stable range is actually good and best perhaps for the long term. I do think that the token percentages that are missing are done so that the prices of GST do not crash as seen by the previous event and that developers don't want it to crash. However, I do think that this is a balancing act because at a low GST price, it actually reduces the cost of minting and it encourages people to use this GST within the step and app and one of the functions is to use it for minting. And when people mint more, this actually lowers the sneaker prices on the market and this represents itself as a lower barrier to entry for new entrants thinking to getting into the app. And with more people getting into the app, it actually means that more people will be adopting and be using and you have more active users on the app. The drawback about a low GST price is that it actually decreases the ROI of any existing users. One example could be that if you compare the price of GST at $6 and at $3, it actually takes you half the time to get back the ROI for the sneaker that you have purchased if the price of GST is at $6 as compared if the price of GST is at $3. But at the same time, there are some considerations for a high GST price. With a high GST price, it actually makes it more expensive for people to mint their shoes. However, at the same time, it actually increases the ROI as I just mentioned. And this actually creates a phenomenon whereby more and more people will be trying to cash out their profits. And if the ROI is so high, actually many more people will jump into the app, try to make a quick buck and get out of the app. And this may not be the best for the step end ecosystem in the long term. Overall, even though a delicate balance must be maintained, I do think that higher GST prices are preferred over lower GST prices. And one, we can see it through how the step end development team managed the rules through the faster change range and the lower change range. And so they actually want to push the prices up from 1 to 4 faster and actually want to slow down the price increase from 8 to 10 at a slower rate. And finally, the fourth observation is that as GST prices increase, less GST will be required and more GMT will be required. This is because people 
will earn GST through daily activities and will need to swap out their GST for GMT for different purposes and here including for minting. And this actually creates a sell pressure on GST and a buy pressure for GMT. And as such, the price pressure for GST is down and the price pressure for GMT is up. For the second part, the statement developers did tell us some consideration for shoe minting rules. And the minting rules will be dependent on the GST to GMT ratio. And this actually will affect the token count, not only the token percentages. And as you can read on the white paper, if GMT goes to a point where it's more expensive than GST, then they'll start considering changing the token count required for shoe minting. From this, we also know that the development team is keeping a close eye on the on-chain conditions for the two different blockchain, both on Solana and on Binance Smart Chain. We also see that the shoe minting rules will depend on the current state of demand and supply in the market. This could be due to events that the step and development team have rolled out by themselves. One example of such could be the double minting event or the double GST event which the development team did tell us about. Or it could be external changes, for example, like currently the crypto market as a whole is going down and that could actually affect the price of smaller tokens like step and. Furthermore, because the team did mention that they will be rolling out different rules for different on-chain conditions for Solana and for the Binance Smart Chain, I do think that there might be plans to equalize the prices and liquidity between Solana and BSC. And one of the actions I do think that the team has been taking is to airdrop Genesis and new BSC sneakers to existing holders. And I do think that this is to encourage existing users to move onto the BSC and also to encourage minting there such that the price and liquidity will be driven down so that more new entrants can actually enter the step and add on the BSC chain. And as you can see, shoe minting is a key activity in Stepman because it actually affects the prices of GST, GMT and also for sneaker prices. And I do think that the step end development team is using shoe minting to influence the demand and supply for GST and GMT and that in turn affects its prices. Based on the rules that they have rolled out for the shoe minting events, I do think that they envision that there will be a stable price range for GST to be in for the long term sustainability of step end. The team has actually created more mechanisms to increase the sell pressure of GST when the price of GST increases. On the flip side, it also increases the buy pressure of GMT when the price of GST increases. And as such, if we were considering to hold GST for the long term, hoping to earn from its long term price appreciation, maybe you want to reconsider doing so because of this mechanism and perhaps many others that they will roll out. GST is unlikely to rise in price very much, at least not very much past $10 as what you can see in the rules because the team didn't really cater for any rules past $10. Not financial advice, but you can consider taking profit in other tokens like GMT, Solana or a stablecoin like USDC. And one very important thing to note is that the game is still in beta and so you need to take into account and expect changes along the way, especially in the future. And one action that you can guard your own interest is to take profits along the way as there might be major changes that could dramatically change the position that you take on step N and that could change the position of your investment on step N as well. Overall, I do think that in the short term, it may be confusing and frustrating for some of the step N users, but I do think that these changes are in line with the development team to make step N a sustainable game in the long term. And I also do think that for everyone to benefit, it is best for Stepman to be sustainable in the long term to increase in adoption and for more people to come into the app. And I do think that these changes are helping us to work towards such a future. That's all for this video. Do remember to like and subscribe. And if you can, drop a comment down below on what video you want me to make next. Since shoe minting is such a key event in Stepan, watch this other video to find out all you need to know about shoe minting on Stepan. See you next time.